For decades, scientists believed Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, and Mount Hood were separate ticking time bombs, each dangerous but isolated. Now, stunning new NSAR satellite images have shattered that belief. Beneath the Pacific Northwest, a hidden network of magma tunnels has been revealed, linking these three giants in ways we never imagined. The data is so alarming, the USGS has issued a warning, and the implications could be catastrophic. Could one eruption trigger a chain reaction? Could this be the beginning of a supervolcanic system awakening? What lies beneath may change everything we thought we knew about volcanic threats in America. In the shadow of Seattle, a colossal volcano, often admired for its beauty, may be quietly preparing for catastrophe. Contrary to popular belief, the most dangerous volcano in the United States might not be Yellowstone. Instead, it could be Mount Rainier, a snow-capped giant only 60 miles from over 4 million people. In April 2025, geologists began noticing a disturbing sequence of events unfolding deep beneath Rainier's icy summit. Unlike explosive calderas, Rainier poses a unique and chilling threat due to its thick glacier cover. When magma meets ice, it doesn't just explode, it melts and floods, sending walls of mud and debris racing down into populated valleys. It started subtly, minor tremors, then more frequent and deeper earthquakes, shaking the mountain's southern flank. Soon, satellites recorded abnormal heat signatures near the summit. Atmospheric sensors registered rapid increases in sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide levels, classic signs of rising magma. But the most unsettling sign came when geodetic instruments showed the mountain itself was beginning to swell. The Earth was quite literally lifting. Amid the growing activity, a mysterious seismic signal emerged. Low, rhythmic vibrations began echoing across seismic networks from Washington to Northern California. It wasn't linked to any quake or volcanic explosion. It lacked a defined epicenter. The anomaly pulsed with clockwork regularity every 11 hours and moved too slowly to be a conventional tectonic event. Scientists puzzled by the phenomenon dubbed it the echo. Some believe it could be a previously undocumented form of harmonic tremor, possibly hinting at magma movement deep within the crust. As glacial meltwater darkened and took on an acrid smell, it became clear that Mount Rainier was not merely rumbling, it was changing. The rate of glacial retreat surged, turning once pristine streams into turbid, sulfur-laced flows. Beneath this transformation, pressure was building, unseen but unmistakable. By late April, the United States Geological Survey issued a red alert. What began as whispers of geological unrest had become an unmistakable warning. This wasn't typical background activity, it was something far more serious. The possibility of a major eruption, or even a domino effect triggering unrest in other volcanoes along the Cascade Range could no longer be ignored. Some scientists propose that the persistent signal may be a resonance triggered by the shifting of Earth's mantle itself. Its frequency lies below the threshold of human hearing, subsonic yet uncannily steady, like the planet exhaling slowly through layers of ancient stone. Efforts to trace its point of origin have yielded perplexing results. One cluster of seismic data suggests the source lies beneath Mount Rainier, while others hint at a broader origin near the Gorda Ridge just off the Oregon coast, an area notorious for erratic tectonic behavior and seafloor rifting. Still, there are theories that defy conventional explanation. Some geophysicists speculate the signal doesn't emanate from a single location at all, but instead bounces and amplifies through a massive subterranean structure, perhaps a magma reservoir unlike anything ever charted. Stranger still is the rhythm of the signal, every 11 hours with uncanny regularity. Not 10.9 or 11.1, exactly 11. What geological mechanism operates with such mathematical precision? Tidal interactions? Planetary harmonics? Or could it be the ticking of a geological clock, counting down to an unknown event? As hypotheses multiply, they grow ever more speculative and troubling. One theory suggests the signal might be caused by a colossal, a superheated gas bubble shifting deep beneath the crust. Others point to the resonance of a massive fault interface under growing stress. A few suggest the vibrations stem from interactions between deep mantle plumes and tension within the overlying lithosphere, a kind of subterranean pulse linked to core mantle dynamics. 
What makes these anomalies especially chilling is their historical precedent. A similar signal was recorded in the days leading up to the 2011 eruption of the Nabro volcano in Eritrea. Back then, the tremor was written off as background noise until magma breached the surface and the skies filled with ash. What if this current signal is also a warning, an encoded message from the Earth, spoken in frequencies only now being deciphered? And if humanity has finally learned to listen, what happens when that voice abruptly goes silent? Following the signal's emergence near Rainier, seismic activity quickly spread. Within days, instruments across Oregon and Northern California detected tremors. Mount Hood began to stir with subtle quakes, while Mount Shasta shuddered under a new wave of unrest. Even long-slumbering Mount Lassen began to register anomalous ground movements. What began as a localized swarm had rapidly become a regional event. Yet the most unsettling developments came from farther south. Near the southern San Andreas Fault, seismic arrays picked up harmonic tremors, low-frequency vibrations commonly associated with underground fluid migration, or the buildup of pressure in magma chambers. These were not random rumbles. They carried a spectral fingerprint consistent with vast subterranean shifts. Now, a grim possibility is being considered by experts across the field. Could the unrest beneath Rainier be cascading through fault networks across the west coast, destabilizing the entire Cascadia subduction zone? Once regarded as speculative, this scenario is now being urgently discussed in closed-door briefings by leading geophysicists. The data suggests more than coincidence. It hints at an interconnected system on the brink of transformation. Adding to the unease is the eerie pattern of seismic swarms. These tremors didn't scatter randomly. They pulsed methodically in a north-to-south wave. To some observers, it resembled a slow, haunting signal echoing through the crust, perhaps a geological prelude to something much more violent. What began as isolated unrest beneath Mount Rainier quickly evolved into a broader seismic enigma. Over 50 million people living along the U.S. West Coast now sit beneath a growing cloud of geological uncertainty, waiting for the Earth's next move. Then came a breakthrough. Satellite data from NSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, a tool capable of detecting ground deformations as small as a few millimeters. It revealed a startling anomaly. In just two weeks, the southern flank of Mount Rainier had risen by over three centimeters. In human terms, this might seem trivial, but geologically, it is deafening. Such uplift is not the result of seasonal thawing or erosion. It is magma exerting pressure forcing its way upward, silently inflating the Earth's crust from within. This wasn't the only troubling signal. Subtle distortions were observed in the terrain near the Carbon River Valley, a known Lahar pathway. This area thick with glacial ice could become a deadly conduit if volcanic heat melts and destabilizes its frozen armor. A single eruption could unleash a torrent of rock, ice, and water, hurtling down valleys at freeway speeds, an unstoppable wall of destruction. The real question is whether emergency systems would activate quickly enough to save lives. Thermal imaging added another layer of concern. Infrared data exposed heat signatures in locations once thought to be geothermally inactive. Concurrent chemical analyses detected rising concentrations of volcanic gases, carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, both known harbingers of magma rising through fresh fractures. And then came the visual clues faint steam emissions curling up from the summit's fractured rim. Not definitive evidence of an eruption, but unsettling nonetheless. Deep below the surface, seismic arrays began capturing long-period earthquakes, low rumbling vibrations often associated with the movement of molten rock and hydrothermal fluids. Unlike sharp tectonic quakes, these events are muted pulses, signaling shifts in the volcano's deep plumbing system. Perhaps most foreboding of all, the mountain wasn't just rising vertically, it was bulging outward in a radial pattern. This outward pressure, flagged by AI-driven geophysical models, mirrored deformation profiles seen prior to historic eruptions such as Mount Pinatubo and Mount Redoubt. As if scripted by the planet itself, yet another clue emerged. Underground acoustic bursts, ultrasonic shockwaves, resembling muffled explosions, reverberating from deep within. Together, these signs tell a story not of isolated volcanic rumblings, but of a complex, accelerating system straining at its limits. 
According to one expert, it's as though a massive underground balloon is inflating beneath one of North America's most perilous volcanoes, growing at an unprecedented rate. These signals, while individually explainable, together form a chilling mosaic of an imminent geological upheaval. The question has shifted from whether an eruption will occur to a far more pressing concern. How much time remains before it does? Beneath the Pacific Northwest, an unexplained rhythmic pulse has caught the attention of seismic researchers. This low-frequency vibration, repeating with near-clockwork precision every 11 hours, doesn't match any known tectonic, volcanic, or man-made pattern. The phenomenon, nicknamed the Echo, resonates from various points along the West Coast, yet efforts to pinpoint its origin have yielded contradictory results. Some data hint at a source deep beneath Mount Rainier, while others implicate a tectonic anomaly near the Gorda Ridge off the coast. Intriguingly, some simulations imply the signal may not originate from any single point at all, but rather ricochet through subterranean voids like sound in a pressurized chamber. Whether it stems from shifting magma, a new fault system, or something more enigmatic remains uncertain. On May 4, 2025, the United States Geological Survey made an unprecedented announcement. Mount Rainier's alert status was elevated to red, the highest level of volcanic threat. This was no theoretical exercise. A red alert signifies that a significant eruption is either occurring or about to occur, posing immediate danger to lives, infrastructure, and the environment. Within hours, emergency command centers across Washington state were fully activated. Sirens echoed through the Puyallup Valley, mobile alerts flooded devices, and the National Guard mobilized to assist with evacuations, logistics, and aerial monitoring. News outlets erupted with urgency. Headlines warned of a potential repeat of the Mount St. Helens catastrophe. But Mount Rainier presents a graver threat in a fundamentally different form. Unlike St. Helens' lateral blast, Rainier's greatest danger lies in its ability to rapidly melt glacial ice and snow, triggering catastrophic lahars, fast-moving torrents of mud, rock, and debris capable of decimating entire communities in minutes. Over 150,000 people reside within areas identified as high-risk zones for such events. Hospitals, schools, and major highways are all within the path of potential destruction. What if Mount Rainier's recent unrest is not an isolated incident, but the opening chapter of a much broader and more ominous geological story? In the days following the Red Alert, volcanic tremors began radiating beyond Rainier itself. Mount St. Helens, infamous for its catastrophic eruption in 1980, started venting sharp bursts of sulfur-laden gas. Deep within its long, quiet crater, seismic instruments recorded a growing sequence of small quakes. At the same time, Mount Baker released wisps of steam, while subtle but distinct seismic signals began to emerge from Glacier Peak and Oregon's Three Sisters. To the untrained eye, these events might seem disconnected, minor fluctuations in a geologically active region. But volcanologists saw the pattern for what it could be, a possible chain reaction, a regional cascade. Data from Mount Hood and Crater Lake revealed tremor profiles disturbingly similar to those recorded in the early stages of previous eruptions. The question had shifted from will Rainier erupt to which volcano is next? Could this mark the onset of a new eruptive phase across the Cascade Range, a cycle of activity that hasn't occurred in thousands of years? The prospect is chilling. If one eruption sets off another, can the West Coast endure the shock of consecutive disasters? This may not be a single mountain crisis. It could be a reawakening, slow, unpredictable, and far-reaching. When people imagine a volcanic eruption, they often picture a plume of ash rising into the sky or molten lava oozing down forested slopes. But Rainier poses a very different threat. The mountain is cloaked in over two dozen glaciers, and it's this ice, not fire, that could unleash unimaginable devastation. If even part of that frozen mass were to melt rapidly during an eruption, the result wouldn't be a lava flow but a lahar, a fast-moving, sludge-like torrent of mud, rock, and melted ice. And lahars do not meander, they surge. Roaring down valleys at speeds approaching 60 miles per hour, they obliterate forests, erase roads, and consume everything in their path. Entire communities, Orting, Puyallup, and Enumclaw, sit directly in the potential lahar zone. In the worst-case scenario, these towns could have less than 40 minutes to evacuate. 
The electron mud flow, Rainier's last major lahar roughly 600 years ago, covered vast portions of what is now the Puyallup Valley. At the time, there were no highways, no residential neighborhoods, and no airports. Today, those vulnerable zones are filled with life and infrastructure. This isn't fear-mongering, it's statistical foresight. Scientists stress that the danger lies not in speculation, but in probability. If Rainier erupts, the key questions will not be whether there will be casualties or systemic failure, but rather how many lives will be lost, how rapidly events will unfold, and how far the damage will reach. The warning signs are already flashing, yet human readiness remains dangerously uneven. While geological sensors are detecting changes beneath Rainier's icy summit, towns closest to the threat are struggling with basic preparedness. In places like Ording and Puyallup, emergency sirens malfunctioned during recent tests. Some were silent, others drowned out by everyday noise. In Enumclaw, vital evacuation signs were missing, and rural areas lacked designated safe zones altogether. Parents were left unsure whether schools had conducted lahar drills. Some had not. Meanwhile, misinformation races through social media faster than an eruption. False alarms, conspiracy theories, and fake evacuation orders sow panic and confusion, undermining efforts to prepare and protect. All the while, Rainier continues its subtle, ominous rhythms beneath a crown of ice. Over the coming month, scientists warn that the situation could become increasingly volatile. Volcanologists are closely tracking activity within the magma chamber, while seismologists are running models to anticipate potential seismic swarms that could precede a larger event. Emergency management teams are quietly rehearsing worst-case scenarios, ones filled with uncertainty and urgency. What if the mountain erupts under the cover of darkness? What if torrential rains unleash a deadly lahar, even without an eruption? There's more to uncover, more voices to hear, and more ground to shake. Be part of the conversation before the mountain speaks again.